If you're coming out west to hunt, it's a good idea to have some bigger optics with a bit more magnification, but with those bigger optics comes bigger price tags. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a pair of binoculars by Maven that are actually somewhat affordable. But the real question is, how well do they perform? So Maven has two different lines of glass. They have their B series, which is kind of marketed as their premier uh, higher quality glass line. And then they have their C series stuff, which is essentially mid range, mid tier, a lot more affordable option. And I have a pair of both. So these are 18s. I have a pair of 15s. We're going to compare the two, the B and the C and see how the two compare and how well they stack up against each other. So let's throw these on the tripod. I have a few other binoculars. We'll test side by side and we'll see what they look like. All right, guys, we are back from our testing, so let's talk about what we saw. Now, you be the judge for yourself, but we compared three different binoculars, the C4s, the Vortex Diamondbacks, and the B5s from Maven. I had intended to throw in another pair of 15s, some Mioptas, but my Digiscope adapter really wasn't cooperating, so I don't have that footage. So we're gonna compare these three to each other. Now, starting out, the B5s from Maven I've been running all year and we're going to kind of use these as a benchmark. For reference, these are going to run you $1,550 for a pair of 15s or $1,600 for a pair of 18s. So we're going to use these as kind of the benchmark. Compare that to the C4s by Maven. These are going to run you $550 for a pair of 15s or $575 for a pair of 18s. So right off the bat, you're looking at roughly a thousand dollar price difference between these two. Uh, performance wise, I think they both did really well. In fact, I would even say that to my eyes, the C4s almost handled the color contrast a little bit better than the B5s. Although at those farther ranges, the B5s obviously looks a lot more crisp. The edge to edge clarity looks better. And that's again, no surprise these are almost a thousand dollars more expensive. This glass actually with their B-series stuff is made in Japan and assembled here in the US, whereas Maven's C-series stuff is made entirely in China. Speaking of China, that is where the Vortex Diamondbacks are made. I wanted to throw these in as another budget-friendly option for 15s. These are actually even more inexpensive than the C4s. These come in at roughly 370, 380 bucks uh, at the time of filming this video. And they're actually even lighter. So these weigh only 35 ounces and they are incredibly lightweight for a pair of 15s. Contrast that to the B5s or the C4s. These weigh both 45 ounces. And besides the weight, the overall size is pretty similar as well. The B5s may be just a hair longer, but they weigh the same. So I had real high hopes for the Vortex Diamondbacks, but as you could probably see for yourself, performance just really wasn't there. In terms of clarity, in terms of colors, in terms of a weird bluish hue to it, I just really wasn't impressed with these at all. And even though you would save a little bit of money going with these and save some weight in your pack, I just don't think it is worth it. In my mind, I would much rather save up the extra 180 bucks and get a pair of C4s by Maven. Now comparing the C4s to the B5s, obviously again, these are gonna perform a lot better, but I really do think these held their own and I was overall pretty happy with them. I think there's gonna be two types of people that are gonna love the C4s by Maven if they're looking for a higher magnification. And the first is obviously anyone on a budget. Hunting gear is incredibly expensive and it's getting more so every day. Your optics are gonna be one of your biggest expenses. 
With that being said, not everyone has the budget to spend thousands of dollars on binoculars. So that's where something like this for five, six hundred dollars, you can get into a real high quality, higher powered pair of binoculars for a fraction of the price of even, you know, something like this or spending thousands of dollars on something made in Europe. The second type of person I think could really benefit from the C4 binoculars is anyone that's coming out west maybe once or twice a year. They want a higher magnification binocular for glassing, but they may not use it back home and they'll only be using it again once or twice a year. I think this could do a great job at filling that role. Now, if I were gonna be using them a lot more often, again, I'd probably wanna save my money and upgrade to something like the B5 or maybe a Vortex Razor UHD or best case scenario, something from one of the European brands that you're gonna get the highest possible quality. But for somebody that's only using it once, maybe twice a year for a week or two, I think something like this could do a great job and get the job done without sacrificing too much. I'm not gonna feel underpowered if I was glassing with these next to somebody glassing with these. I would feel like I'm holding my own just fine. So for anyone that's wanting to come out west without spending a ton on binoculars, I think these could be an excellent choice. But this is all entirely my opinion and what I'm seeing. Let me know what you guys think and how it looks to you. Are the C4 binoculars worth the money? Are they a piece of crap and should be avoided at all costs? Let me know. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know your opinions and we'll catch you in the next one.